Hello, good people of YouTube, Mountbatten here, and today we are taking a look back at the Tier 9 Premium Italian Battleship, the Marco Polo. Now, as you can tell by the title of this video, the Marco Polo did receive a small buff. Its Sigma was raised by 0.1 to 1.9, which may not really seem like that much, and in most battleships' cases, that would improve their gun performance by a decent bit. But in the Marcos Polo's case, it has improved it by quite a bit because of the nature of the Marco Polo. For those of you that don't know, the Marco Polo is an Italian battleship, obviously. She came out with the Italian battleships. She is a 16-inch battleship, however. The Italian mainline, their largest caliber is 15-inch for good reason, because... This ship, like the mainline, has SAP. SAP is really freaking powerful, especially in large calibers, which is why the Italian mainline has some pretty poor dispersion, and so does the Marco Polo. But the Marco Polo, unlike the mainline, has a little bit better performance in terms of accuracy, because she only has 9 guns. The trait of the mainline is that at higher tier, they have a large volume of guns, like the Cristoforo Colombo with its 16 15-inch guns. So, yeah, you can see how that adds up there. But with the Marco Polo, her small number of guns means that you can't really have poor dispersion and still perform well. Because you're throwing less shells at the wall. And with the improved accuracy of the Sigma and the better dispersion than the Italian Battleship Mainline, the Marco Polo today, with this buff, is quite good. Quite very good. Now, before, if you watched my original Marco Polo review, you're, you're hearing me say that, like, yeah, this version is pretty poor, but you'll still be landing one or two shells, and those one or two shells do, like, 8 to 10k damage. But with this improved Sigma, you'll be landing quite a bit more shells. Now, are you, are you going to be landing every single shell in every single salvo on your target? No, but you will be landing just maybe one or two more shells which then brings the average damage of the Marco Polo up by quite a bit because these these sap shells these 16 inch sap shells do a maximum damage of 13,050 that's 1,000 damage shy of the Yamato's maximum damage which is quite potent on a shell that doesn't overpin it's sap if you guys don't know, SAP is essentially HE, which doesn't really overpin, unless you have some really weird situations going on. It delivers a lot of damage to just about every ship you can see, except for DDs, because they gave the uh, same battleship gun caliber treatment to the DDs with the SAP as they do with the uh, other cali uh, battleship caliber guns. Uh, ammunition types. So, you know, originally, it wasn't like that. You were able to, like, just Vandal snap DDs out of existence, but they realized that's too much and they took that ability away. But against cruisers, light cruisers, heavy cruisers, battleships, if you hit the lightly armored portions of the ship, you will be doing good, consistent damage with the Marco Polo. How much? Well, if you're watching the video right now, the, well, the gameplay going in the background, you'll see I'm up against um, a Jean Bar in Alaska a few other battleships on this uh, battleships and cruisers on this side of the map that don't really have the thickest armor in the world and I, I chunk them for like 16k 15k 20k with not all the shells landing on the target so it's quite good now the good thing about the Italian battleships is that when you do hit it's pretty good consistent damage but with the mainline Italian battleships you can't really aim precisely too too much because of their dispersion with the Marco Polo, you can do this a bit better, which means you can aim for certain parts of the ship and you'll have a pretty good amount of confidence that your shells will go generally in that area. So you can aim for the bow, the upper belt, uh, the superstructure, and the shells will tend to go there. While on the mainline Italian battleships, you're just kind of going, ah, eh, screw it, I'll aim about there, and some shells will, will hit there. But with the volume of shells on the mainline, you can totally do that. So what else is great about the Marco Polo? Well, besides this buff to her guns, her armor is pretty decent. It's essentially a scaled-up Roma in terms of her armor. She has a 32mm bow. Uh, her upper plating is 70mm on her side. Main belt is 320mm. She does have a 130mm cheek, just like, well, very similar to the 
Roma, Stern's completely 32 millimeters, Stern Dex 32, uh, main Dex 55 millimeters, which is pretty nice, and upper deck, is, I'm sorry, uh, bow deck is 32. Now, her Citadel, it is, well, like other Italian battleships, it is turtle back, but it's a very thin turtle back with a 25 millimeter. Sit or, uh, angled Citadel plate. She's also decently quick at 33.6 knots, and she has a 16.7 second rudder shift time, which is pretty darn good by tier 9 standards on battleships, but definitely not the most maneuverable battleship ever, but definitely not a slug either. Her concealment, when you have the module and the skill on her, is down to 13.2 kilometers, which is pretty nice for a tier 9 battleship. It's, uh, Within, I think, a uh, kilometer or two of the best tier 9 concealment for a battleship. And with that 13.2 kilometer concealment, you are, you are able to dictate the terms of your engagement. If you run the range mod on the Marco Polo, at least. Uh, speaking of my build on her... Well, let's talk about her downsides first before we get to the build, shall we? So, the downsides of the Marco Polo. Well, her guns, she, they're, they're great with the sap. Like I said at the start of the video, the nice little buff to the Sigmas has certainly helped them out here. But they have a 36 second base reload time on 9 16 inch guns. Which is terrible, of course. And you might be wondering, well why don't you take the reload mod? That would make perfect sense, you have a 31 second reload time on the Marco Polo at that point. But, your maximum range isn't that great either without the range mod on you now have a 19 kilometer maximum range on your tier 9 battleship which is not very good in the current meta especially again your tier 9 ship you're going to be up tier to tier 10 quite a lot and you simply need the range to really hang in there at tier 10 now you do have the spotter plane available on the marco polo that can solve some of your problems with the range if you want to run reload mod but the spotter plane's only up for so long, it's got a really long cooldown time, and even with the range mod on, you still only have a 22 kilometer range. So, you, even at that point, you still really need the spotter plane to really hang in there in most cases. So that's a big drawback, but it's understandable just given the insane alpha capability of the 16 inch sap shells. And that's the main drawback on the ship right there, but if you can get past that, the ship is really quite good. That's the only really major drawback. I mean, well, it's the, the AA, if you want to talk about the AA, it is Italian AA. Very short range, 4.6 kilometers, but it's decent-ish within that 4.6 kilometers. However, again, with the Soviet CVs now, um, they can kind of just have their way with you because they can drop you long before they're ever within your AA, well, your effective AA range, if you will. But... The gun reload time, the range is the biggest drawback on the Marco Polo. However, now again with that slight buff that we got to her dispersion, it's just so much easier to get consistent damage out of the Marco Polo. And again, with 16 inch sap, 16 inch sap, I mean, that that's freaking crazy. You are able to just dunk on whatever it is you hit just about. You have 102 millimeters of pin on this sap. So that means up to 102 millimeters, whatever you shoot, it's gonna do damage to. Think about that. That's easily a lot of upper belts at tier 9 and tier 10. That's just about every single other part of the ship that isn't well armored like the belt, the turrets, the barbettes, and the conning tower. And with the accuracy of the Marco Polo what it is now you can again pick what part of the ship you want to shoot at and you got a much better chance of hitting that so even if you have just decent aim it's really easy to get at least 8k a hit now with the Marco Polo with me with uh, a lot of what I'm seeing it's like 10k to like 15k again depending upon which ships you're facing because some ships like the the Soviet battleships their turrets are massive so if they go bow into you it's kind of hard to arc the shells behind the turrets um but a lot of the french battleships american battleships even the germans if w w with their massive superstructure you can easily just chunk them for like 20k a salvo there and that's great that you're able to do that this ship's great at just bringing in good consistent damage now um even more so than the mainline ships because of the improved accuracy now and it's really 
surprising that all the ship needed was just a little tweak now to be in such a good place. And I don't think it's like it's far from broken or anything because again, you have a 36 second reload time. If you don't take the range mod, then now you only have a 19 kilometer range, which means you're you're stuck in these very short term, uh, short range engagements. But the ship isn't isn't terrible at by any stretch of the imagination, but at that point, if you're playing the ship at close range, uh, even with the reload mod, you have a longer reload than most of the other tier 9 battleships, um, and you don't have HE, so if they get, if you get stuck in a close and bow tanking situation where they're hiding behind their turrets and you're trying to you know lob your sap shells over their turrets into their superstructure, um, they're just going to burn you down in terms of HE versus sap. And of course the ship doesn't have HE either, so you can't start fires or anything like that, so that is a, another drawback to the ship, but um, the sap, I think the sap alpha more than makes up for it. But it's, it's a really good ship now. Uh, would I recommend, you know, drop drop what you're doing, go buy it right now? No, but if you ever get around to picking it up, um, I would say it's a really solid choice for a tier 9 premium ship. Great Italian Battleship Commander Trainer 2, of course, as well. And it's pretty fun to chunk in cruisers and battleships for uh, 20k a pop at times. And Oh, the AP! I didn't even talk about the AP. The AP is really good, too. It is, of course, 16-inch AP. Um, but, just like with the Italian cruisers, if you can't absolutely guarantee you're going to get a Citadel shot out of what you're shooting at, just keep the sap loaded. The sap's got a higher alpha than the than the than the AP, of course. Uh, the AP has a maximum alpha of thirteen thousand and fifty, which again, it's not bad. But with the sap's maximum alpha, just go ahead and use the sap until you know you can for sure penetrate their citadel, which is mostly in close range brawling situations. And both the AP and, and uh, sap have a velocity of eight hundred thirty six meters a second, so. Good, nice, fast shells, and they also have a flat shell arc too. I forgot to mention that earlier, but yep, yeah, really solid all-around ship right now. I gave this ship a solid eight out of ten, with of course the the sap alpha, the improved accuracy, the 16-inch sap being the pros. The con oh, and the armor too, pretty decent armor layout. If you're used to the Roma, you know what to do with the Marco Polo here. Uh, the cons being the short range, long reload time, and short range AA. But overall, really solid ship that I recommend you guys pick up eventually. Especially if it goes on sale, be a real still for that. Alright guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. We're on our way to 35,000 subs, and I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Hope you all have a wonderful Friday. I, am, I will be live streaming right here on the channel from 5pm US Central Time to 8pm US Central Time. So make sure to come out for that. Hope you guys have a wonderful Friday and a wonderful weekend. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.